the weather as it's been, it's been a bit cooler now and I'm still in France for a couple of weeks, I decided to make a, a start on the new secret series for 2021. I've done one already as you see here. piece but quite technically difficult. Um, I wanted it to, uh, I enjoy it mainly because of that figure in the foreground. I just love the light against dark there. Um, this one, more classical scene with the triangular composition and uh, you know the eye being led through and round I hope. I've got an area here that was a bit wider that I hoped well I make my compositions on the computer most of the time putting parts together and uh, making it my own compositions. So uh, this canvas was longer than the composition, and uh, never mind. We're going to paint this with the sponge roller and with the brushes. So that's probably. So I, if you haven't seen me before, uh, I'll run through that with you. Ordinary standard canvas, white primed at the moment. Um, I have a sponge roller here ready. I think the sponge roller also is a large filbert brush that I tend to use for mixing. It's quite a heavy brush for that because it's going to take quite a lot of heavy work. Little paint uh, tray. Just to mix in and my sponge roller. They last for about three or four paintings usually and I have to replace them so not too bad. Uh, one of the first things you might think about is whether you have to keep cleaning the roller but you don't. In fact with the way I'm painting we, we change it to every sort of two or three colours maybe sometimes even more. I have to work from my mid-tones down to my dark and then back up from the dark from the mid-tones through to my uh, lights and the highlights at the end doing nearly all the background painting, almost the entire painting, as an effect of light first of all, just to get all the underpainting done and textures, and then working in with a brush at the end to pull it all together and become as tight as I wish. You can't really start uh, tight and finish loose. So we work it very loosely with the sponge rollers first. And what you want to see first is how I use the sponge roller, which I'll discuss first of all, and then we'll go on to the actual painting. So down here, my Stay Wet palette, my homemade sandwich box palette. Very simple. I say stay wet because uh, put two layers of paper towel on the bottom and then wet that and the paints go on top and they keep uh, wet for quite a long time. Being very wet I've had them last all the six months I'm away in England and come back again. So it's not a bad technique. Heavy body acrylics. Uh, I'm using quite reasonably priced ones at the moment though they are heavy bodies. Mixing palette and as I say I have, over here I have my brushes. A plethora of, of flats and straights. I always use long handled. And then the nylon brushes, again reasonably priced ones I found, and I keep flats and um, filberts. And I have rounds amongst them as well. I usually have uh, nine brushes, uh, six of which are of one type, and then three of which are rounds. So I've got the two sets here. Uh, painting knife, and larger brushes, sponge if I need texture, and all the basics. Right, put that away again there. I shan't need these brushes for the moment. And of course a jar of water here ready to go too. And the composite photographs that I want to work from. So I'm going to start off then with the background. So I'm going to start off then with the background colours. Um, all of these lovely golds here, mid-tones first, as I say, working down to the dark. So we're we'll working all of these colours up, working down to all of these darker tones in the background, and then putting all these light ones back on at the end with the roller and with brushes as well. Quite complicated because it's quite a detailed scene. Okay, first of all, how do I apply my paint to the roller? Well, I take the paint from here and transfer it into here. A little bit of water just to get the sponge going. I like my sponges to be damp at first, but that soon happens as soon as you, you, you do the mix. If it's too wet it trickles all over the canvas, but you get some lovely effects. If it's too solid it will go in lumps, and you've got to roll the roller out really evenly at first. I can put a little bit of water into my palette just to get the brush and everything moving. Get some clean water. I'm going to start off with this sort of blue, yellow, grey colour here. Um, so, so I want to get that effect first of all. I can usually just see my drawing through this, so that gives you an idea of the consistency of the paint. For that, in this case, I'll take a little bit of uh, yellow ochre. You always need more paint at the start than you think, so make a fair amount. It's going to be tinting a lot of this first of all, because uh, some white and a wee bit of very bright pink into that. Start with that and then take it down with um, some blue afterwards by just overpainting. 
and put the roller through the brush. That's one of the most important things that we're going to do. Don't let your brush go get clogged up. Use all your paint. Roll it through the brush onto the uh, paint surface. That's what we end up with a nice put roller ready to paint with. So I'm not going to do the whole painting for you at the normal speed or even take the sections out all the way through. What I'm going to do is give you the basics and then let you wash it at speed. The colours, you can see most of my palettes. You've seen it. Here's my palette anyway. So I have all of these colours for use if I want them. Um, and you can see me doing complete paintings. I've got many of these on my uh, channel. So you can see the whole painting is being done and in detail. But let's just start off as how we apply the paint. Now you can use the edge of the roller to do a fine line like that. Or you can use the flat of the roller gently to do a broken effect like that. Which is great for doing glazes because I can do that one or the other. But at the moment all I want to do is... If I cut slightly over the lines, just a little bit, then I'm safe when I come back. I don't get a halo. We don't want a halo around forms. I want this colour going on behind here straight away. I'm just going over her arm as well. I often um, I find that one colour comes into another in life because they reflect on each other. So very often I'm um, doing the same thing here. Now that whole area is lighter, but I'm going to put that lighter colour over later. At the moment I just want to get in this background of tones. And I'm going to use that paint a bit more thinly on her in a moment. Or around her. Her face, yes, it's going to be... I'll bring that colour right through the face for the moment because down here around the neck, because it's going to be required glowing through the lighter colour I'm going to put on top. And it gives that lovely coherence of, of the light. And that comes right the way around here an archway to put in there again. I've got, this area is the area that I don't have on my original composition because uh, the canvas was longer as I was saying. I want to come right up and through here. Now the paint's going to be a bit thinner on my roller so I'm going to use that a little bit thinner now to go right around. I want her face to have the colour coming through it as well. Right around here where the light area is, you can really use the paint upon the roller and use it almost transparent. And we get a slightly mottled effect, which is rather lovely. That's what I want to use. It's like watercolour in a way, in that, only in that, you are using controlled accident. And it is very controlled this way. You might think, how on earth can you paint such a fine scene um, using a roller like that? I'd be surprised just how fine we can go. So I'm building up layers, first of all, of paint one over the other with the roller. Put some more paint on the same way and to roll the roller through the paint, through the brush, to get the effects I want. All of that needs to be done. That's a bit heavy because that's a darker area. Through here. And I'm going to put this right through behind here as well in a moment because I can paint through it as I say. So Although that might seem uh, a bit strange, it might look as if I just painted the whole thing and to hell with it. In fact, I'm using a slightly thinner coat again. don't want it on that part of her arm because that's going to be very, very light later. I do want it down here, going right down the front of the dress and here. Just blowing through there in the background. It's quite a thin coat now that I've got. I don't need it much more. I'll make a bit more of the colour. Continue here. Right up and round. When I start off a painting, it seems very daunting. I mean, it's a big painting, really. Um, but once you get into it, once I get all the area covered, I start to gain more confidence because it starts to make more sense. Until then, it's, uh, it's quite a daunting size canvas here. Yeah. So I'm not going to do all of this at this speed. I'm just going to show you uh, the technique, how we can use this to draw our effect. You can see how I'm just thinning that out as I come across here, because I want to put other colours across it. So I'm just going to let this blow through in a minute. I'm going to do other colours right the way through and just use all this paint right up 
come into the hair here, right through. And pick some of that through into, into the head. And of course, I think she should have that colour going through her as well there. My dress is going to have that colour in it. So, and then this area here, it's quite dark there actually. Um, it's the light, and I want to just give it a thin coat in a moment. This is the light as well, so a bit more pink in my roller, and we'll just give it a thin coat there, right down to the dress, and round, round him, down here. I've got to find these, so I've got to come back in there with a different, different set of colours because um, it's going to be quite, quite different there. Light, there's light to go in there as well, and the window, the window here that I've got to put in, which should be dark behind him, which would be quite nice. And down to the floor. Yep. So it's you already you can see the difference in tone just by putting thicker layers or one over the other. And light watercolour, if I put one colour over another, it will become darker. So I'll do a little bit of just here. It's quite light at the moment. I want to go over the existing colour. It goes one tone darker, like watercolour, so we can control it fairly well. Right up into there. Again, putting a double layer on there, and you see how it goes slightly darker. There's a bit more pink up here in a minute. I've got lots of layers of this to build up. A bit stronger there. Bit more yellow there, in fact. A tad more yellow into that, a little bit more um, yellow oak into that bit just there. And how else are we? Uh, oh, yes, we've got this area to do yet, so quite thinly over a hole of this. More water. And I'll just do the whole of this area. It's going to link it. Above, I do want to link these areas together. So many amateurs painting, and they look at the colour and they say, Right, blue sky, brown dirt, green leaves, doesn't work that way. And one colour comes into another, reflects into another. And this orange will reflect right through this dress. You see how I'm using different layers and thicknesses of it now to get this effect. And that will glow through the greens and I'm going to put in there later. Even here, this orange colour is coming into it a bit. It's greeny, bluey green underpainting I'm just starting to put onto him. So that, that colour is going to glow through all the way down here. So it's quite dark up in here, some of these places here. I'm going to start using the edge of the roller now to make some of the to form some of the architecture, just to, get to the bottom there, just to get some of this, these darker areas here. And you see, just, just, uh, just to give the effect, but what I'm doing is, at the moment, is um, doing an impression. I just want an impression of who, she says. Um, not one that's for sure, he didn't use one of these. Uh, I just want to get an effect of light at the moment behind here. He's a bit thinner now. And over the other colour. You can see how I get lights and dark straight away. Just to take that away there. Just get it a bit thinner over there. And if I go one colour over another look, I can get my light watercolour glazing. I can get my lights and darks. Even if these lights and darks are thinner there. Here I'm not too worried because I'm going to be putting much lighter colours on there later. But that light colour does come through, so it's dark colour, it does come through here a bit. And against her face here, it's much lighter. Just silhouette. Right the way over, and you start to see the forms appearing. I don't think I need to do <coughs> much more in detail for you. You can see how the painting will work now. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and complete the painting and put the film up at speed afterwards because you don't really need to see, you don't really need me to talk you through it all. So I'm going to work from 
these mid-tones out to my darks and then back again and come back with lighter colours, okay?
Well, that's the work with the sponge roller completed, so you can see how you can build up almost an entire atmospheric picture without any detail at all, and just hopefully now pick out the main colours I want and the differences and a few salient points, lights and darks and so on, and hopefully we'll bring this picture together. Well, it's time to continue this picture now. You see I've worked it all up with the sponge rollers to the amount that I require as uh, an effective light and background. Now I've got to come in gradually picking out details and pulling it together. Again, I'll do this at speed.
think I've almost done here. No, I don't think I need to do too much more to this painting. Little brush strokes like that can just help to give the creases in the folds. I'm not completely happy with her face. A little bit dour there. Portraits, that's for sure. I want her a bit more smiley somehow. She's not quite dour. I can just take up those eyes a little bit, it's not easy. I think that's just picked her up all right. I think we're about done there, you know. I'm not quite happy with this head. Oh, it's got a blind spell, but I need my medication. I've got uh, a problem with hidden migraines, and I suddenly go blurry and blind, and uh, I've run out of my tablets there on the way. I'll have to look at it in a minute, and I've sat down a while. Hopefully my sight will come back in a minute. Yeah, I'll have to just have a oh wait, can't see what I'm doing, can't see properly, but I have to call it finish for now and do the signature. And uh, then um, have a look at it later if it's not right, I'll look at it a bit more, hopefully it will be. Mm -hmm. 